Since man began angling with rod and line, what best to use on the hook to attract their quarry has been the subject of most discussion. Whether different types of fly for trout and salmon or lure colour for predators, the right bait brings a result where other offerings fail. Making bait for over 30 years, Nash Bait have grown to be one of the most successful and internationally respected manufacturers of carp bait in the world. This success has been based on the drive and determination of Kevin Nash, his fundamental belief in the importance of bait and a desire to find edges, both for himself and to help others catch the most difficult carp. Three big ones for me are number one location, two bait and third rigs. If you can't find them, can't catch them, so location's number one. Then you need to tempt them with a bait that is irresistible. If you can't create greed, then you won't trip them up on the rig. So the second most important part of carp fishing is the bait. If you go back to the late 60s when I started carp fishing, anglers were on potato, bread crust, flake, and the specials were just starting to come out, you know, ground bait or sausage meat. And then a guy called Fred Wilton wrote this amazing article in the British Carp Study Group magazine. His theory was that if you gave a carp everything it needed in one bait, then that would be the ultimate bait and it would be irresistible. Well, kind of didn't quite work like that, irresistible for a while, but we learned that carp you know, get clued up and learn to be wary of things. But that's how my fishing developed into the HMVs. And in those days, you know, None of this stuff was available in shops. We had to source it all ourselves. From there, I started a company which was originally called Happy Hooker Tackle and Bait. That name got changed in the 80s when I got married because my missus refused to answer the phone with Happy Hooker. But um, that's how I started. I was always into bait, you know, Kevin was always into tackle, you know, we decided to do both, you know, and over the years he's helped with the bait and I've helped with the tackle, but like, primarily my job's bait and his job's tackle. I first started making bait when I was about 16, 17, probably 30, 40 years ago, and uh, it was just simple pace then. At the time, it was even affordable as well. It was more affordable. You had to sort of like use bread and things like that and cheese. And I used to mix the cheese with the bread because it was cheaper. And the carp fishing just went from that. I have tremendous respect for him. You know, he's got a wealth of priceless information. You know, he's got the biggest phone bill in Nash Tackle. And I, I never moan about it because he's spending half the day with a phone glued to his ears, talking to all the guys, testing the baits for him. And the wealth, the wealth of information that he's got is just unrivaled in the bait gun. We had the lads testing the baits for us before we brought them out. You know, they started with famous baits like Monster Pursuit which uh, young Terry Hearn got on. In fact, I think I'm right in saying he caught his first 1440s on it. Amber Attractor, uh, which was yellow bird food, an amazing bait. You know, those are kind of the baits we started with. But I've always been looking at new things all the time, and I've found these powders, these additives. There were several of them, but we you know, ended up using only the squid because the squid got by far the best results. The launch of the squid propelled Nash Bait to even greater success, word getting around that Nash was serious about producing high quality, affordable bait for carp anglers around the world. A lot of names got on the bait and uh, you know, a lot of budding anglers made their names because of Nash Bait and I'm very proud of that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Terry Hearn, Nigel Sharp, you know, they were two young lads who were on the Yateley Complex. Daryl Peck, of course, you know, he's one of the lads we had.
the list is endless, you know, I always say we're the proving school for them and then um, someone nicks them off us because they pay more money than you know, we're prepared to can afford. But that's like it. The names just mentioned prove that the kart world is constantly evolving, sometimes for the better, other times for the worse. However, one man who's stuck with Nash for years and years is Steve Briggs. Known as a big fish angler both in the UK and particularly abroad, his simplistic approach combined with the advantage of Nash bait has helped him bank some of the most sought after carp in the world. Well, through the year, my fishing ends up being quite varied. I fish a, a vast amount of different waters. But, you know, if, if I could only fish one type of venue for the rest of my life, it would be a large public type venue. Thinking of places like Cassian, you know, through, through the years, they've been my favorite type of venue, but I do get something out of all of them. You know, I can fish the small ones, fish the medium ones, I fish the big ones with various stocks. And to be honest, I enjoy them all. Sessions tend to be a week to two weeks these days. Some are shorter, some a bit longer, but generally a week to two weeks. The aim, I suppose, is to build up a swim through that time. The first, you can always fluke a fish on the first day, which is always nice, but really the best results tend to come later on in the session, which is quite pleasing actually, because it means I've done the work right. Bait is always the first thing I sort out for a session and quality bait is always the way forward. I mean, I've, I've used all of the Nash range in my time and done well on all of them, you know, whether it's Instant Action or, you know, now the Key Cray, the Scopex Squid, they've all been good. Uh, the main thing is getting that bait established. So getting it out there, not necessarily putting loads in to begin with. There's, there's not a 100% set way to bait up a swim. It is a little bit horses for courses, but quality bait is always the key, always the key. I like hemp, you know, I'm a big user of hemp. Not necessarily the bigger particles so much, you know, but I like to put something out there that's gonna build up the attraction, and hemp certainly does that, and pellet does that. But the bigger fish, the bigger hits of bigger fish that I've had over the years have always come over quite big beds of boilies. You know, that's quite noticeable that when the fish are on it, they come to the boilies, they love the boilies, and the bigger fish will push the small ones out to get to them. You know, that definitely happens. You know, I will use a mixture of all sorts of different things at different times, but the one constant in there is the boilies, really. You know, I've got a lot of faith in them for catching the bigger fish. Any one of the Nash baits on its day, and I know it's gonna work. Whether it's the Instant Action, the Key Cray, Scopet Squid, it's just the confidence of, well, in your gear, in your bait, and then the rest just follows on, really. The rest you have to do yourself, though. In the early 2000s, Kevin had the chance to grow the company, to include a media team, key member of this team was Ollie Davis. Up until recently, Ollie stayed firmly positioned behind the camera, working as Nash's top photographer. Although he normally shies away from the limelight, his photo album consists of a surprising number of big and beautiful cars. I guess I'm quite lucky. In the last decade, my job in the industry has taken me all over the country, photographing other anglers and filming them, and indeed all over Europe and that gives me the opportunity to get the rods out on lots of different types of venues. My preference is to, to be able to watch the fish feed in, but that's not always the case, you know, you have to be able to adapt and fish lots of different types of waters, and I'm not the sort of person that chops and changes the rigs that I use. I use one or two different rigs that I know work in certain situations, and I, I take them everywhere with me because I know they work everywhere, and bait to me is the same, you know, it's quite personal thing but once you find something that works and works everywhere it's something that you don't have to worry about anymore. I 
carp fishing is about making choices and decisions, quite often snap decisions, you know, when you arrive at a venue, where should I go, which end, on the wind, on the back of the wind, out in the middle, in the edge. Bait is something that you shouldn't have to worry about, you know, if you turn up with a bait that you're confident in, that's not part of your decision. You can concentrate on finding the fish and presenting your bait in the right area and the right approach. For me, I only ever take one or two baits with me. You know, you can apply those baits in different ways and that opens up your options, but it's something that you don't have to worry about. Likewise, with pop-ups, I take one or two colors of my chosen flavor, which is citrus, and that's it. I don't have to worry about 20 tubs of pop-ups because I know that if I get the color right, the flavor will work, the fish will eat it. My angling is predominantly on a, on a weekend. On a, I'm a Friday night angler. I have been for many, many years. You have to give yourself every edge that you can, and I try and make the effort to go up to the lakes in the week, and I try and bait up a few spots to keep, keep the bait trickling in on certain areas. I'm an edge angler, so I can watch the fish as well. I quite often go up, not with the intention of fishing, but if there's an opportunity, if I have a rod, well, I've always got a rod in the van, so I will try and make the most of it. You can always tip the odds in your favour. A lot of anglers won't make the effort to go in prime areas or bait areas, and that doesn't mean a lot of bait. It can just be a handful, but regularity is the key. As a result, you know, if you get carp feeding regularly on these spots, they'll clean them for you. Quite often when you're feeding the fish in this manner, you don't actually have to fish for long, which really suits me, you know. I don't get a great deal of time to sit behind rods. I want those fish to to be almost waiting to be fed, you know, and that's the that's the real edge of pre-baiting, you know. If you can if you can get them visiting your spot regularly and accepting the bait, when you do put a hook bait down there, the action is often instant, you know, you can have bite within seconds. This has probably been the busiest couple of years at Nash in terms of work, but it's also been probably my most productive in terms of fishing. You know, I've been quite lucky to have been privy to, to the key and, and the tandoori garlic when they were first released, and it's definitely made a difference to my angling. I've fished all over Europe and all over the country, and I've been privileged to catch some amazing carp. Producing well beaten baits requires an in-depth understanding of both carp themselves and crucially also the science of food and nutrition. Kevin and Gary had always worked as a team on Nash Bait, combining a wealth of angling and bait making experience. But leading bait expert Dr Keith Sykes joining the research and development team in 2012 was pivotal in moving the company forwards once again. Keith has contributed to exceptional success stories like the key, the unique stabilisation process that keeps bait fresh without traditional preservatives and the world-renowned Citrus Attractor Package. Returning to the Nash Bait story, and things are expanding fast at Nash. Serious investment is needed to keep up with demand, and Gary had begun thinking about a new Nash Bait factory. Yeah, every time a unit come open, we used to have it. A couple of rounds together, thinking we've got lots of space. Six months down the line, we needed another unit, and it just got a bit out of hand. We started to grow seriously faster. In 2016, a massive investment was made to develop a new facility with the aim of not just making more bait to supply the demand, but also to be able to further increase the consistency, freshness and quality of the finished bait reaching the consumer. After, after all the work what I've done building the factory, I was a little bit almost worried about what's going to happen when we actually start working in here. But I was really apprehensive, like getting it started and like the packing room, everybody's saying the packing room was really too big or some were saying it's too small. And it's all just worked perfectly, you know, right down to every single shelf I've put on. The new factory is just, to me, it's just brilliant. It's a long trip compared to what we used to have, everybody who worked here, but 
everybody says like it's, it's just love, love working in the place. And yeah, and even a happy staff makes a difference. Nashbait's new facilities now enable the company to produce 500 kilos of boilies per hour. The new rollers cutting 10, 12, 15, 18, 20 and 24 mil allow them to make boilies suited for all applications. An additional benefit of the new production facility is the ability to roll custom mixes for the Nashbait customers. Anyone placing a minimum order of 80 kilos can now personalise their bait to suit their own requirements. Over the years I've made a lot of good baits which have caught a lot of fish and like you know I've been responsible for different people catching record carp. I've caught record carp myself on the same boat on our bait. Scabbit Squid has got to be my proudest moment if you like in making bait. Yeah, you know, I've made lots of baits and Scabbit Squid is the one that's probably caught the most big fish, he's probably caught the biggest percentage of the fish in England than any other bait and in parts of Europe as well. Everywhere you go, it catches big fish. Developing the squid was like very, very satisfying for me. Uh, developing new baits, completely new baits, with new ingredients, is very difficult. Everybody nowadays, especially with the internet, has got access to everything you've got. It's hard to tie up exclusives. We still do, and like we just tied up an exclusive for being supplied in the UK for the key cray. It's always worth looking for new ingredients. It's hard to find new ingredients. The crayfish meal is exceptional. I've never known fish react to it, anything like it. You know, I've tested every single raw ingredient you could possibly imagine and seen reactions and non reactions. Again, quite natural. It's like key cray. People say they've got a natural bait, they've got eucalyptus oil in it, something like that. You know, when's the last time you see a eucalyptus tree in the middle of a lake? Yeah, crayfish meal, there's like 30 odd percent of crayfish meal in it. And that's 30 percent of what they can normally find to eat. You know, there might not be crayfish in your lake, but crayfish are made up very similar to shrimps and everything else. They eat it all year, because they eat crayfish all year, and eat shrimps all year. Key Cray, along with Scopex Squid, are baits which have been designed as food sources, giving carp the nutrients they need, resulting in them choosing to feed on them time and time again. They're the perfect baits for anglers who are targeting tricky campaign-type waters, pre-baiting, or fishing medium to long sessions with the aim of building a swim. But in today's busy world, not all anglers have the time to fish this way. And in the case of Alan Blair, fishing time is always limited. Nash Bait have been working hard to also produce baits for anglers who just need action and want it quickly to suit their fishing lifestyle and approach. When I look at people like Kevin Nash, you know, he's devoted his whole life to catching the biggest carp. Me on the other hand, I'm just happy going out there and getting bites, catching as many fish as I possibly can. I'm not the guy who's going to go and apply a load of bait, try and build a swim up or build an area up and get the fish revisiting it. More often than not, I'm visiting a venue once and once only, so I need everything in my favour to catch carp straight away from the off. To give you some examples, a lot of my fishing revolves around fishing pop-ups. Single choddies, little multi-rigs, Ronnie rigs, basically locating the fish, tracking them down and casting single hook baits at them. At best, I might flick a few freebies over the top. In many cases, I'm using 10 mil baits. Again, just to be that little bit different from everyone else, and it's caught me a lot of fish. Bait choice, you cannot go wrong with a citrus. It's caught me an incredible amount of fish over the last two years. As well as that, when I'm rocking up at any park lakes, I'll always opt for something white. Something like the coconut cream or the amber strawberry, you'll never go too far wrong. For sure, I use pop-ups an awful lot, that single hook bait lure approach. But other situations, things like when the fish are particularly wary, maybe fishing the river for example, they don't really come into their own and that's when I draw for the cultured hook baits. They're packed full of attraction, they ooze out goodness for, for hours and hours on end. As I say, they've caught me some really special fish. When we come into the summer months, fishing gets really, really exciting. The fish are a lot more visual and I can go around the lake exploring different areas and get them feeding on the surface.
That's when things like the rise of pellets, slow sinking maggots, and soft hookable floaters come into their own. You can hunt those carp down. It's the most exciting form of fishing, and I really, really buzz off it. And that's what I was saying earlier about, you know, the power of a higher tracked hook bait in this sort of situation. I'm not trying to build up their confidence through feeding and, you know, and applying bait regularly. I'm rocking up with a single hook bait or at best just a few freebies. And that can be the result if you get it right. Approach the swim quietly, assess if there's any fish there first. <laughs> very, very instant. Buzzing. Like I said earlier, I'm not about sitting it out for days, weeks on end, you know, trying to catch really, really big fish. I just love catching carp. And this is a great example of that. We've only been here for a, for a short amount of time this morning. And by sort of tracking them down, that hunting approach, and using nice bright baits like the citrus, I've managed to trip up an absolute stunner. Alan Blair's enthusiasm and work ethic has been crucial to the success of Nash as a company. This, combined with Kev's love for angling and seeing other anglers succeed, has had a large part in making Nash Bait what it is today. There's nothing that gives me greater satisfaction than to hear you know, one of our boys has you know, had a whack or a fish of his dreams you know, on the bait, and there's nothing that can match you know, that phone call. You know, I had one a few weeks ago, some young lads come on the phone, he was only 12, you know, you know, I can't catch fish, you know, blah, blah, he's blaming everything. You know but he thought it was all down to bait, it was the only reason he wasn't catching. You know, I spent probably two hours on the phone with him, you know, going through his tackle and everything, trying to get him to understand he had to find them you know, before he had the chance of catching and he just needed a simple rig. Then finally, you know, I said, I'll use this bait. And he rang back up last week and you know, one of the girls in the office took the call and she said, oh, I think it's that lad you spoke to a couple of weeks ago. He was so excited, you know, he's had his first double. You know, and the whole office you know, went up with a cheer. You know, and that's what Nashboe, I'm we'll getting all emotional now. That's what Nashboe you know, means to us. All, all this work I've done over the years is not just filling in time. You know, me, every single waking hour and every single waking minute, whether I'm at work or not, is quite often thinking about bait, thinking about fish, thinking about fishing. I don't do going to weddings and things like that. I hate going out. You know, I'd rather go on the bank. We go for a walk, it's got to have water next to it. I'm thinking fish and fishing all the time. And I think because of that, because of the passion that I've got of that and the passion that Kevin's got of that, the company has uh, been born from passion rather than just trying to outdo the next door neighbour and things like that. Who cares? If somebody sells more bodies than me, I don't care. It's just how it is. And that's why I think Nash Bait has done quite well, and Nash Tackle as a whole. Nash Bait and Nash Tackle is made up of passionate people who love, love their fishing as well as work in the industry. You know, not only that, you know, it gives their families a living, but nothing beats knowing that our baits are helping anglers all around the world catch the fish of their dreams. Yeah.